experience like me saying stop don't rush people through lines this is the way I work <laughs> I like taking time with people time so, oh, that is pretty cool man hey I, uh, I don't want to live here but it looks cool <laughs> 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 negative 30 on the daily <laughs> right. Woo working in the motor pool oh my <laughs> god hold on let me see. oh this actually looks this is good oh, yeah. it looks like I'm outside I'm gonna be like this <laughs> <laughs> Watch, I'm gonna do a video. <laughs> Guys, I'm outside right now. And, oh, you just saw my shadow on the window. All right, I like it. <laughs> it's the window, it's the QA, it's the QA. <laughs> All right, QA time. Feels good to be back at the con, geez. Yeah. All right. Testing, testing. Hello. Testing. You guys turn it on? Yeah. Hey, is there any. Uh... Oh, okay, that's it. How are you guys today? Good? Yeah. That's a little too loud on this microphone. Anyway, uh, thanks for coming today, guys. Alaska, who lives here in Alaska? Let me close the window because I know people are like, uh, the, the sun is now in your eyes. I just wanted to be like the white light episode, you know? Where it's like, man. Well, guys, thanks for coming. Um, first, let me say I appreciate you all. I, uh, I want to let you guys down. When I make a commitment, I make a commitment. I know it was two years ago, I made a commitment to Alaska. I was really excited about coming to Alaska. I still am. I know everything's still kind of weird with all this mask stuff, but uh, we got through the Legend of the White Dragon, yes. which was super cool. We got through it. It was very challenging with the union. Uh, it's, it still is, but um, we got through it and uh, it was good. So I just didn't want to jinx myself if anybody had the COVID, then we would pretty much not make the film. We originally started as a Kickstarter, and uh, hey, baby, originally started as a Kickstarter, uh, and then we had private uh, investors step up and believe in it even before they saw the movie, which is always good to have someone believe in you before something's there. Now that is there, everyone tries to believe in you. You know what I mean? So anyway, it's good. We've got a lot of work. Uh, it's uh, we originally started the film. Uh, and most movies take like, hey, most movies take two years to make. We wanted to push this a little sooner, but uh, our effects are amazing right now. So we're kind of on schedule. We have a distributor. Um, I wanted to push it to like, you know, the end of the year a little bit, but there's conflicts with certain movies coming out. So we got to find the right time. So we might be looking on the end of the year, possibly 2023. We're still on schedule of making the two year mark. I think where people get confused is the first Kickstarter. That's a completely different story. That was, uh, it, it tied into the Power Rangers universe. Hasbro would have shut us down. You would never see the Legend of the White Dragon ever again. So it was one of those things where me and Aaron had um, an idea for 10 years and we went against our heart to do something the first time. It was just against our heart. I, I didn't want to do it. It's just not the storyline I wanted. And it didn't succeed because it didn't. I just didn't feel it in my gut. So when we originally kickstarted it, I'll never forget it. Kickstarter was, I think, March 9th or no, March 20th, something like that. And then we had the original Kickstarter and then COVID happened. So I told everyone, I said, man, let's respect people. Let's not do the Kickstarter. But then I was going crazy mentally. So I was just going crazy. I said, man, right now, entertainment is the thing right now. Uh, you know, so I don't look at Kickstarter as donations help me make a movie. I look at Kickstarter as like buying rewards. You know what I mean? Like you get a reward, you get a poster, you get a t-shirt. So once we did this, I just wanted to do it just to get it out because it was in my heart. So we surpassed the goals and we got to the next level. Let me explain because people ask and they were a little confused on, uh, on, on what it is. It's a whole different universe. We're not competing with anything else. It's, let me give you a scenario. I love Power Rangers, always loved it. Hasbro has not invested well into the project to bring it to life. Uh, Disney bought Death Row Records, okay? 
that tells you something. They sell death row shirts, death row hats. It's like, what's death row without Suge Knight, Tupac, the Stoop Dog, all that stuff? But it's a brand, and that's what they like to do. And so with the Hasbro, they don't understand what fans want. Aaron does. He's very smart. He's uh, He's been out there. He's in the world. He understands what people want because he is a fan of your age. And uh, we wanted to go a little darker. From day one, we wanted to create the Green Ranger series. I don't know what happened. I paid for I paid for Lord Dracon out of my own money to, to show him how that trailer can be. I don't know what they're thinking, right? So uh, anyway, it's just one of those things where corporations don't understand people, they understand numbers. Someone asked me like, what happened to the Power Ranger movie, man? Like the first one, what happened? Why did it bomb? I don't know, but they put 120 million into it. It didn't make the money. They sold it to Hasbro. Now, if you go look, look back at the most cheers in the movie was when me and Amy showed up, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like, but the director wanted to cut us out completely. Like he did not want us. We went, we did a cameo. He was like, I don't, I want to start a whole new universe and cut all the originals. And I was like, eh, it might not be a good idea. I'm out there on the front lines, always promoting it, always promoting the brand. Uh, and so, you know, Hasbro, and I, I'll tell the actors, and I go online all the time, on behalf of Hasbro, which I have nothing to do with Hasbro, that I, I thank all the, the Power Rangers for going around the world and keeping the brand alive. You know, they don't see it like that. It's always been one of those things where they call them helmet heads. <laughs> it's true, they, and they would tell you straight out, you could be replaced, I don't care, it's all about the helmet. And it, I had to grow up with that at 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, with self-esteem problems. Imagine that, like you ain't good enough for a woman, I'll get any other woman. You ain't good enough for a man, I'll get any other man. It's one of those things where I knew there was more to Power Rangers than what was in front of the helmet. It's the man. The man, the, the, you know, the, the, the man makes the suit like a black belt. I tell my black belts, I don't care what you wear. It's not the belt that makes the person, it's the person that makes the belt. So people don't understand. And uh, it's one of the things that we did with, uh, you know, the uh, Legend of the White Dragon is we made it out of passion, pure passion. I don't care about the profit. Anyone that asks, you want me to do the movie? How much are you gonna get paid? You're out. That's just the way it is. That's why Font's in it. He believes in me, we believe in each other. King Batch stepped up, Michael Matson, who I always wanted to work with. We had this emotional scene where we were having bad days together and through the camera something magically happened. Uh, you know, Michael's never broke down in a scene ever. He's like a gangster and he broke down in, our, in this scene and we opened up a lot about mental health issues. And um, it was an amazing movie and it moved me a lot. And uh, the action was great. I was like, you know, hurt in the movie, but you'll never see it. It was the best action ever and I did not want it to be flip rolls that I wanted to be more real you know what I mean and uh, a darker deeper storyline that you guys can relate but still safe for your little girl to watch we're not dropping a lot of f-bombs maybe one but that was Michael's fault <laughs> also but we're not running from we're not running from rebranding so if you're gonna rebrand Power Rangers into a dark role, it needs to disappear for a while. Then you need to bring it back. It's a kid show, still on TV to this day, 30 years going on a, a network show. So for us, I didn't feel like we had to live up to anything. It's, we, don't, we don't have to compete to anything. It's the Legend of the White Dragon. So it's like, you're, you live at home, you have a nice home, you go to a hotel. You go to a crappy hotel, you wake up, you're like, man, this hotel sucks. But then you go to like the Best Western Four Seasons, you sleep in the hotel, you're like, you know what? I actually like it here. Maybe I don't wanna go home. <laughs> That's what Legend of White Dragon is. It's a small, smaller hotel where you'll feel comfortable and you'll look and say, you know what? It's got action, it's got Jason, it's got a suit. I don't need to hide who I am. I got tattoos. I'm tired of always being told what to do and how to act and you can never do this and you can never do that, you know? And I said earlier on TikTok, people judge people all the time. Five or six seconds, the people judge. They judge you right away. And I have tattoos. And I'm not saying anything, but just look at me. I do have a different color skin than anyone else, but they judge. Batman over here helped me in the elevator today. When I was stacked up with my food, he said, let me help you, let me get that. But he didn't know who I was until I got into the elevator. And that's the kind of people you need in life that are kind. You know what I mean? And 
people that treat me different and then they find out who I am, I, I, I don't want to be treated any different. I just want to know if that's how you really treat people. Because at Chick-fil-A, I go there all the time and uh, I sign autographs for people. Look, I got a family too. You know, I got a wife, I got a child. People will interrupt me for food. I'll take pictures with them. I've never said no. So this particular Chick-fil-A, uh, you know, they, I, I do everything for them. So the guy, it, it, this was frustrating. I don't know why it's so agitated to me, but it, I wanted breakfast, you know, I wanted those little breakfast sandwich things. And I pull up and it was 10.30 and she said, man, take your order. And I said, uh, yeah, hold on, let me look at the menu. And then she just walked over and flipped it to lunch and came back. She's like, I'm sorry, it's 10.31, breakfast is over. I'm like, what? You can't make breakfast? I was like, that's crazy. I was like, you know, so the, the, I said, can I just speak to someone? And the manager came out and he was really rude about it. But then someone recognized me. Oh, oh bro, no, oh, it's a Green Ranger. Bro, anything you want. I said, I don't want breakfast. But well, you said, I, I want to be treated like everyone else. I'll order lunch. You can't open the kitchen for the Green Ranger, but you should open the kitchen for the guy that pulled in line at 10, 1030 to give, to give food. And that's just my whole life. And it's been one of those things where everywhere I go, people want to give me free TVs and free this and free that. Give the people that need TVs TVs. Don't give me a TV. If I have access to help people, then I here to help people. And that's what I like is when I meet people is I like to listen and validate and listen to stories. And I can't tell you how many stories I've listened to that are just amazing stories, you know, and we all have it. And there's people that say Power Rangers TV show could not possibly change lives, but I disagree. Because when you hear a song, you go back to that moment, right? And you see TV, you're like, oh, I'm a childhood all over again. And that's what it's all about. And um, I'm here to, to, uh, to be accountable partners with everyone. I'm no better, I'm no different than you guys. We all deal with mental health stuff. I'm here to be accountable. And, uh, but I'm here to also teach you a lesson that Anything you want to do, you can accomplish. You just have to have passion. If you want to be rich and famous, it ain't all that great because you have the same problems. You could take a poor man that has mental problems and give him a rich life and he's got mental problems. It makes it harder for him because he access to more of the addictions that he has. You see, so we got to fix ourselves in order to be. So I never judge people on what they do, who they are. I just happen to treat everyone equal and I got lucky. There was a guy who financed uh, one of the private investors that came up with a lot of money and I called, everybody let's sign the paperwork. I don't want to, I wanna know why. Well, why? Because that's the way I am. I wanna know why and I wanna ask, is this gonna affect your wallet if something happens to the movie and it doesn't do? I know it's gonna do great, but I just, I care about people. And um, he said, no, no, I'm fine. I said, okay, why? Why do you wanna invest? Most people just take the money. He said, because I believe in you and I believe in Bat in the Sun. But the true story is he's a hardcore con goer. He goes everywhere and he really respects people. He buys everything. Like he'll travel, he'll spend you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars traveling around the world. And I came out to him at one show. He's in a wheelchair and nothing to do, I don't judge people. I came out to him way out of my line. I said, what's up bro? Nothing. I said, you want a picture, autograph, anything like that? And he said, no, no, I'm fine. I said, no, give, give me a picture, hold up. Give me something, kind of like you all, right? Like, give me something here, let me sign, let's take a photo. From that experience, he said that no one's ever done that at a Comic-Con, especially for anything for free or coming out to see how they're doing. And that's how I got one of my investors, is to be kind to everyone and anyone, no matter who they are and what kind of person that they are. I don't judge people on your past. I don't judge people on what you do and who you are. I judge people on your heart and what you do for people. You know what I mean? And I think it's so important for people to do that. And it was so important for the world years ago to just love and understand that we all have hearts and feelings and validate each other and try to come up with some kind of common solution to sit there and say, I understand, you know what I mean? I understand how you feel. And let me tell you how I feel. And for you to understand instead of fighting. And it's been too much of that. So that's why I love working on Power Rangers because it was Angel Grove all the time. And, um, you know, it was one of those things that I needed to work on Power Rangers. Now I look back on my life, it's one of those things I needed structure in my life. I was a martial artist, yes, but I needed structure as a teenager. Because right now, if you look at what's going on with life and world, 
it's terrible. I mean, Michael Madsen, as you know, is blasted all over the internet. His son killed himself at 26 years old, and I talked to him, and it's just, the life is devastating right now. People are lost to COVID. So what do we learn out of this? We don't get depressed about it. We learn that we live 86,400 seconds a day and make those seconds count for people. You know what I mean? That's the most important thing. That's why when you offer help on the elevator, people are like, well, I'll help you, but people don't do that sometimes. You know what I mean? And uh, But if they knew who I was, they would do it. You know? And uh, there's one time I posted, and then we'll get through the grandpa talk and we'll get through all the other stuff. <laughs> but one time this truck was in the middle of a, uh, of a, of a, you know, like a road and cars were flying by him and nobody was helping the guy. Boom, honking. I was like, the dude's stuck. Like he's stuck. So I pull on the, on the side of the road and Jenna, all, I, I teach Jenna to try to be polite and kind to people. So I just jumped out. I started helping this guy push the truck, continuing while everyone's honking and F off, get out of the way. I pushed it off the side of the road. And I posted that for one reason. Not to say, look how good I am, because I do a lot of good things to people all the time. I posted it to say this, how many people would have helped the Green Ranger push the truck? How many people were there for him to push the truck? Nobody. So that's a point of just take, helping and being kind to people. If I said, hey, Green Ranger needs help pushing the truck, I have a thousand people behind me. Me, behind me, but that's not what it was about, it was behind him. So it just, it's, it's, it's mind blowing to me that I'm be 49 years old, you know, and on Dino Thunder, there was a line when I got the script and this will make you all feel great because I know we got 30 year olds in the, in the house, all right? Raise your hand if you're 30 and above. Let me tell you what sucks, all right? I got a script on Dino Thunder. I was like, okay, I'm a mentor. I need glasses. I really do need glasses in real life now, but, uh, but I'm 49, so I didn't have glasses. I got 20, 20, 20, 60, whatever. All right, I, I did the, the uh, DMV test and then I just memorized this line and it was the same line. But uh, in Dino Thunder, I got the script and there was a line that said, I may be old, but I can still pull it off. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you put yourself in my position at 30. You see what I'm saying? Like, why don't you say that at 30? I don't think I was old. It was like, what? I may be old, but I can still pull it off. But I can truthfully say this about Legend of the White Dragon. I am old and I still pulled it off because it's one of the best movies, <clears throat> best action that I've ever done is because it truly came from passion and following your dreams. Some people are on there like, well, this sucks. This should be a Power Ranger movie. Quit judging. Just get off the page and, and let people live their dreams. If that's their dream, that's their dream. You know what I mean? If you look at everyone in life that have different jobs, cleaning bathrooms and taking out the trash and doing all that stuff. What, what, the, what, if we didn't have those people, where would we be? There was one girl who loved cleaning the bathroom at the gym. That was her passion. I said, okay. I went to her and I said, you know what? You did a good job. And she said, yeah, I said, you did a good job. I said, I'm proud of, of you. And she's like, oh, well, because she, you know, she took pride in what she did. And I think we need to take pride in more of what we do and follow your dreams and anyone else that says otherwise you know what finger to give them because that's the truth follow your dreams and make stuff happen i'm sick of motivational people do this do that it's like okay gary v how tony robbins how i went to your seminar i can yes yes like, okay shut up now and tell me how give me the secret and the secret is believe in yourself and go and get the opportunity because it ain't gonna come easy. Hey, you sleeping, wake him up. You, listen, this could change your life. <laughs> the hell are you sleeping for? This is good, valuable stuff. You can be the next big director that fires me and says, I remember you. You told me, wake up, no, for, I know you're all tired. I'm tired, I got in la late last night, no, this time difference. But that's all, I just really wanna tell you, we'll get into Power Ranger questions, but I just really wanna, I'm so thankful and, and blessed to go out there and look at my lines, man, and look at you guys. and. Everywhere I go, it's just you guys are so great to me. And it's like, how can you not hear? I know you hear this a lot, but you're my hero. If I get tired of hearing it, then you need to leave the convention scene. You know what I mean? I'm not here for money. I'm here for a hobby. And as much stuff as I got going on in my life at this particular moment with my daughter being a teenager and everything else, I'm still here. And I'm giving you this speech as a reminder for me. You see, every time I talk, it's for me. 
I might be greedy, but it's for me and a reminder that staying humble is easier than rising to the top. You wanna to rise to the top, then you drop back down in the valley, you'll see what happens. It's not good. So just be, it's hard to stay grounded. You know what I mean? I haven't wore a suit in a long time. I ride a Harley, man. All my Harley friends are like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, well, you know, it's Comic-Con. Bruce Campbell told me to dress up, yeah. you know? He told me dress up and uh, and he said, and you know what he told me? And this is very interesting since I'm talking about it. I didn't have hand tattoos at all, but he said, Jason, once you dressed up, you're gonna be treated different. Said, Bruce, man, yeah, whatever, okay, Bruce. I dressed up in a suit and I was able to walk through any convention I wanted and I was in the green room and the voice actor who plays Charlie Brown, I don't know his name, you anyone know? He gave me this whole, after I got incarcerated, I was like, Charlie Brown? <laughs> My dreams. But anyway, he goes, can you give me a cup of coffee? I said, sure, man. Get you coffee. Thought I worked in the green room, right? And then I go somewhere else. They think I'm security. And I go somewhere else. And I was dressed super nice uh, with Chuck Norris off a show. And all these guys were catching us at the airport. And uh, I said, he's really busy like we're gonna miss our flight I gotta go we gotta go so I start you know telling people look guys be good be good so I, I felt like a bodyguard right and uh and then they didn't know it was me and they're like oh s-h-i-t that's jdf we got a box right here for him to sign but it was too late because I already crossed the border but one side one guy said dude I can't believe jdf is Chuck Norris's bodyguard <laughs> that was like that was amazing to me and Chuck Norris did encourage me that his career did not start, it didn't take off until he was 50. You know, if you look at all these other actors, man, you're like, and Mark Dacascus, who I always wanted to work with, he's in my movie. I mean, these guys have been so great. And David Ramsey, as you guys know, Arrow, uh, he's in my movie, and I think they greenlit another movie, uh, or a TV show. And you know how I met him? I, I didn't know if he's watching, but that's fine. I didn't know who he was at the time because I'm just busy in my own world and I was in the green room and a guy came up, he said, I know this is inappropriate, but can you say hi to my kids? And I said, what's up, bud? Just like your little girl, right? I love little kids. I, I what's up, man, what's going on? I said, hey, I didn't even look at him. I said, can you give me your dress, bro? I'll send you a, a box of toys. Boom, box of toys goes out. Next thing we're casting. Who comes there? I didn't do it for David Ramsey. I did it for his kids. He comes up to me and he dedicates that. And I said, man, I'm afraid to lose you for the sequel. He, he, he uh, touched, touched my heart as a man and said, bro, I'll always be here for you and the Legend of the White Dragon. I'm not going nowhere, I promise. And I really, truly believe that man. And I can't say I can beat him up because he does train. <laughs> he really does do martial arts, he's great. Hey Spidey, what's happening? You having a good time? Any, any webs lately or anything? Hey, this was the best thing on King Batch. He says, oh, you're Batman. He's like, oh, I'm Spider-Man. <laughs> Did you see that part? When you, oh, it was so funny. All right, enough talking. You know, we all have to work on each other, right? And my biggest thing I think that people get mad at is I talk so much. But you have to understand, this is my life. Like, imagine since you were little as an instructor to talk. So it's hard when I don't go home to talk and talk and talk. You know what I mean? And I forget that sometimes I have to listen. So let me do that now and train myself to listen to you guys with any questions or anything like that that I can answer that's been on your mind. Maybe we'll, since you had your hand up in the back over there. And then Batman, so raise your hand one more time. One, two, three, four, okay? Can you remember that? I sure can. Yes. Hey, so what's important and not the people because I think we can all agree that watching Mighty Morphin Power Rangers or any of those other movies, the moments when Power Rangers didn't have their powers yet they still overcame and yep. uh, kept moving forward. That was like our favorite moments growing up because it made us feel like we can overcome anything too. Yep. Uh, which kind of leads into my question of uh, it, this is Alaska, it's dark, we have long cold winters, it's lonely, it's hard to get out and meet people especially with COVID and we're all human. Uh, we all have times where we go through struggle mentally and emotionally. What gets you through rough times emotionally? To be honest, man, I, I wrote a lot. And I always like, 
fear to write poetry. I don't want to be a rapper. It's a rhyming poetry that understands what I'm going through. And there is a, a poem that I wrote called Lost and Found that was when COVID started. And it's how I felt. And it was too hard to read because it's emotionally, really emotional for me. But I started writing and I released these poetries online before COVID on JDFFFN. I have poetry called Mask, Mental Prison, uh, Walls. Uh, I have a lot, a lot of poetry on there. Seatbelt, um, Fall. If you listen to that, you will see the pain that people can deal with and the pain that I deal with. I did a short film, film called In My Head. And In My Head lead, led lots of different personalities. Not all of them I suffer, but there's a lot. You get a label. You get a label of bipolar. What does that mean? Bipolar from one to a bipolar to 10. What does that mean? So now kids tease you all day long and say that, but it's just a label because you're a man, right? And, and I'm sick of labels. So I started doing this open poetry stuff. Everyone's like, oh, you're an A3 black belt. I don't think it's tough. I said, bro, that's tough. And if you don't like it, I'll kick your what? You know what? Because it's more tough to put your feelings on the line and look at yourself and be honest and say, you know what I need to work on? This is what I need to work on. So the poetry got me through a lot of stuff, man. I wrote about my mom. I wrote about my brother. I wrote about hard stuff that I've been through. And leaving the show, you don't even understand that story of what I've been through with self-esteem and everything else. I went to Power Rangers, to Haim Saban, to tell him to meet the other actors. I want you, all the other actors were like, oh, we never meet Haim, I'm the big shot. I got you, I'm bringing Haim in. I went to his office, I told him, you need to come to set. You, too many people are talking, they just think you're just a money man. Nah, I ain't going to set, I'm not gonna meet him. Nope, I'll just pay you more money. I said, I'm not for sale, man. Well, you're gonna leave? I'm not for sale. I'll pay you X amount of dollars. Walked out the door. So I'm done. It, I was done because I can't be. I can't be bought. I'm not a hooker. I can't be bought. You see what I'm saying? And I take that. Like I can't be bought here. You can get something at the table or you don't. I can't be bought. You ain't gonna pay me to come here. I can't be bought. And so with that said, I went back. And they and Heim said, if you leave and you quit, everyone's gonna get fired. You understand that? So it, it eventually everyone got replaced and they changed everyone every year. So no one had the power to, to pull that again. You all know what limerence is? Okay, limerence is from that six to 18 months where you have dopamine in your body. You're like, yeah, I love her. And then 19th month, you're like, oh, she sucks, dude. Well, you know? And everyone's like, what are you doing? You're hanging out with this guy and you're like, yeah, and you're in limerence. Well, after 18 months, after 18 months is when life is real. And so they changed the cast. Come here, baby. Come here. Come here. Come here. Go up there, honey. <laughs> you let me hold you before. <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah. So um, anyway, that was hard for me. But on the end of the night, I can lay my head on the pillow and know that I didn't sell out. I'm not a sellout. Neither is my school. I don't charge testing fees at all at my school. I'm not a sellout. So when people say stuff or they do other things, if you came to my table, I probably gave you a free Legend of the White Dragon autograph, right? And I probably did for each and every one of you guys, even if you had kids, because I care. And that's one of those things. So for your mental depression for all of us, everyone's too scared to talk about it. Everyone's talking about COVID. Let's talk about suicides. Let's talk about people that are really hurting. It's like, phew, no one wants to talk about that. Maybe it is sad, but maybe that's what we need to, we need to figure out how we can have an outlet. My outlet was writing and my outlet is you guys. I don't watch TV. If I have an hour show, I'd much rather be on Instagram saving lives, my own life, than going and watching a TV show. Because you have to understand, I have a responsibility to you guys that keeps me accountable for my actions and what I do. And um, so when it's dark, cold, all that stuff, find an outlet, a healthy outlet you can go to. You know what I mean? And uh, it's a serious thing. When people always talk about depression, like, what do you go through? I'm like, son, I'm 49. You were pooping your diapers a long time ago. Don't tell me about anything. If anyone, if anyone knows what I struggle with, I dealt with it. My brother was David Trueheart. He was in, in uh, Zio. He was awesome. But when my brother passed away, everyone wants to know how, why, this, that. He did. And we all dealt with mental health issues. You know what I mean? But I'm proud of my brother. I'm proud of my friends. I got a friend sit right here and they're like, you're hanging out with that guy? I'm like, yeah, because he's got a good heart. So we got to get through it somehow. 
but I don't have that answer, you know what I mean? But that's why I lean on y'all. When I'm gone off the grid, not in the boom grid, I'm probably going through some major stuff. You know, when I reschedule tours, something probably major happened in my life. I just don't put that out there because I, you know, it, it, we're supposed to have happy times. You're not gonna come up here with me? <laughs> you little tease like Kimberly. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, but, uh, but yeah, man, I, and I hope that, that my, you know, it's, it's, yeah, I talk a lot, but, you know, hopefully that, that watch the poetry and then find an outlet. For me, it's writing. The more I can write about it, the more I can talk about my brother passing away. The more I could write about it, the more I could talk about my mom passing away from cancer. If I don't, it's like, I, I, don't, want, I don't want nothing to do with it. I just, ugh, I vomited all my stuff on paper. I've been writing for 10 years, you know what I mean? And um, everybody was for me writing. Paul Schreier, I love you. But he was the one that really got in my head and said, don't do it. And it, was, it worried me a little bit because people thought they were gonna judge me and be like, oh, you have all these issues? Like, yeah, I do. I think people can relate to me because we all put spandex on one leg at a time, man. There is no one bigger and better than you. And that's why out there, if I tell someone like, hey, don't be breaking up the line. I don't, don't cut the line off and I'm not in a bad mood. I'm just saying we're all, let's just relax. We're all here to have a good time. I don't want to leave my fans hanging. You know what I mean? So, all right, Batman. Yeah, so first of all, um, I like your comments on service and whatnot. It was cool to, <laughs> to be able to help out this morning, but that's become an integral part of my life for like the last 10 years. You talk about growing up, you talk about changing, maturing, and realizing like the biggest benefit you can really have in your life is being able to help someone else out. Yeah. If it's small, if it's large. Um, so I'm, I'm grateful that you speak on that. But, you know, you compared my daughter to Kimberly, which what actually was part of my question. We need you to come back. And we need you to bring Kimberly with you. So. <laughs> well, I would love to. And, and listen, and this is something, Hasbro has all power to bring a show back, a reunion show, a television show. They have all the power. They have all the money that they want. It's not necessarily about money, but it's about respect for actors. It's about the respect for, for the actors of doing something. Maybe, maybe, you know, I don't, I'm, uh, successful my karate schools have other businesses it wasn't power rangers you know some people might complain about what they got paid i did it because i needed it i needed structure i'd do it for free i would have fought cm punk for free just to expose them you know what i mean like i would have but he just didn't want to i still fight van damme but anyway this is another story but um but uh people whatever i got add i forgot what i was talking about yeah, we were talking about bringing Kim really up. Yeah, the Hasbro <laughs> thinks Hasbro has every power to do it, but are do they do they care enough to do it? Are they going to invest enough, not just into the actors, but maybe make a union show out of it, bring it to the United States? But they don't. I, I don't know why. If I was Hasbro, I'd have anime show out. I would have a show, and they'll steal this idea too, which is fine. You keep filming. Uh, I would do a show called Angel Grove, like Gotham, where we all came as little kids, where how Tommy Oliver, where he came from, maybe he was an orphan, maybe he had a hard life, where we all came from as little kids. I would have had Angel Grove going. I would have had a, a Green Ranger series, like a like an X-Men, you know, Wolverine can hold his own. I'd have an original series. I'd have something like Cobra Kai. I mean, I would have so much stuff, but they don't understand the people. All they look at is numbers. Well, how much money did this make? Notice how many White Ranger and Green Ranger toys coming out all the time. Wonder why people are like, I'm sick of Tommy. Sometimes I agree. My Lord, Tommy's in the video game. Tommy's over here. But it's the guy behind the helmet. It used to be very low self-esteem for them to say, we can replace you, man. You're just a helmet head. It was literally like that. And it was a hurtful thing to hear that. And you have to prove yourself right, not prove other people wrong. You know what I mean? So in regards to that, I would, Amy, love for her to come around and travel. She does do a lot of cons. Me and her do a lot of things together. But uh, it'd be great and amazing to see a, a, a reunion uh, thing on tour. And I've told everybody this before. And people probably hate me for saying it. Other actors, this is not my job. But it sure be great to all get together and do something for like a charity. For the first time, we're together doing a Q&A just buy a ticket for a charity and either do it online or do it in person. But you see, it's all, it's not about that. 
It's all about that. And I, 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 I hate to see that. And I'm not speaking for them. I'm speaking for everything. It's a lot of your favorite actors that quit. Like, oh, how come when you were little? They, people went to a peace conference. Why? You know what I mean? Like I was in the middle of people going on strike and people doing this. I want nothing to do with it. I was like, I'll do it for free. I was only hired for 14 episodes. That's it. And now look, Tommy's the longest existing ranger because it was like, I'll do it. Font two. Reunion, I got you. I got his contract one time because it said JF. Jason Font, Jason Frank. So anyway, but uh, but we'd love to, love to, I'll try to get her over here. And she, I know she's really busy. She's directing. She's doing CW stuff. She's a director. She's a writer. She's a producer. Yeah, she did a bunch of stuff. So, you know, if her schedule works out, I'd love to love her bring her somewhere. But we always do stuff. You know, stuff together. She's the so, last OG Ranger for me to meet, so. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll try to convince her to come to this beautiful weather. <laughs> Don't tell her about the weather. I will. Number three, right? Yeah, right. Um, this was from um, Power Rangers Wild Force that you did. Um, how is it that you still have your Zale Ranger powers, though, when you um, um, got rid of the turbo powers? Uh, well, that's an entering. What was your first name? Me? Yeah. Oh, Taylor. Taylor. Taylor, what, what do you think about that? Well, here's the thing is that that is a very interesting question, very introspective, and I totally agree with you. Same thing is the fact that when it travels from like different spectrums and whatnot, like the thing is, is that it's an entirely different force of the Power Ranger system. So therefore, if one thing changes to a greater power, that was a greater type, that was a greater power. Man, we need Hazard needs to hire him. <laughs> He's straight BSing. No, but it's true. Listen, when Power Rangers came, there was a lot of loopholes, right? So it's so great to go back and fix the loopholes as well. But you were kids, so they didn't think you would you would see the, the shield, American shield versus the Japanese shield. Well, they'll never see it. They'll never see it. Well, y'all see it now, right? So there's a lot of things. The Master Morpher, that was supposed to be a toy, but it just never happened. You know what I mean? So it's just, uh, yeah, but thank you for helping because we talked about that earlier. <laughs> I get stuck sometimes, so I got my friends to help. You had a question? Who was, yeah, four. Um, I got a couple questions. You got a whole written down. <laughs> That's smart. The uh, post two actually about the Tobo movie. Uh, I don't know if a lot of fans have asked you this, but I saw a clip of it sort of like behind the scenes. The Tobo cause, will they actually will custom cause? Or will they just fake cars with a box on top and a frame? Dude, okay. It's interesting you say that. The cars were so dope, man. Like, you know, like, you know how you, you look at kit cars, right? And you're like, oh man, you can make this like, you know, Ferrari out of a whatever. So they they were dope until you open the door. It was so ugly inside that we had to roll the window with clipper, you know, the the uh the what do you call them? Yeah, vice grips. Roll the window down, wires everywhere, but they, they were real cars and they worked and they ran, but the inside was just so gross. And then they then when we did inside, they built the boxes. All right, let's go. So they inserted them. Thanks for coming, guys. The uh, second question with the couple is, after you guys were done with them, were you able to keep them? No, there was a lot of stuff I did keep. <laughs> but here's the interesting thing. You gonna come? All right, all right. Here's the interesting thing. Uh, Disney, when they had it, they made a point to destroy all the props and everything afterwards so no one will get them. Just imagine if you, if just imagine if they kept them all, they could have had a museum. Like a straight up Power Ranger museum. But I don't know why they got rid of all the props, but I do have the original Green Ranger suit, the original Dragon Dagger that I found. No, I did. I got a lot. Uh, <laughs> But because you know what, they're gonna lose it. It was my stuff, I wore it, it was what it was. So there was things I took, behind the scene photos, all the forever red that Font has on his table, those were all my pictures. And you should see how many people complained about taking a picture. Oh, well, guys getting suits, Ooh, for what? For my picture, that's why. So all these pictures you see, I made them do it. So like, you know, I, I pre-planned. I was vlogging before vlogging was even a thing. I have so much behind the scene footage where like I put the camera on the ground and I actually still have the original camera. I had so much stuff, uh, footage on set that was behind the scenes stuff. So everything out there, all behind the scenes stuff was me. Was, There's Jason running around with the camera because I want to be able to show in the future 
30 years from now. So I'm so glad I was like that. And I'm still like that. I save everything. Everything. Like from every show, I save my shoes, my socks, so I can be like, hey, this is what I wore for this. You know what I mean? Like the Eric Reed stuff, I got everything. The Legend of the White Dragon suit, I got. We're still gonna use it, but that thing was about 35 to 30,000 to make. It was really amazing suit, man. All custom done. So my next question is, the mask mold, like you talked about earlier, how come in the TV show, and that's what they did, you showed some of your suit ones, but in the Soul of the Dragon comics, it shows that you use all of your Because they skip turbo yes. every time. And I told them, look, you're skipping turbo, you're going to have to put put turbo in it. So that's why we had to add because it was so annoying. Everything with no turbo. I get with Sharon Powers, but like, come on. You know what I mean? So we put turbo in there. And I did pick Catherine in the book. Uh, you know, so, I mean, people give me heat about it, but I picked Catherine because she's so sweet to everyone. So is Amy. But I just, it's sad to see someone who replaces and it, it it's, you know, it's, Oh, I wish you were Kimberly. I wish you were Kimberly. I wish you were Kimberly. It's got to do something. Even though they say they don't care, but it's got to do something. You know, when you got to choose between the Black Ranger, who's better, Walter or Johnny, I grew up Walter. But I don't want to hurt Johnny's feelings. But the Black Ranger's Walter Jones, man. To me. Because I started from the beginning. What's up, bud? Hey, this goes to the movie, uh, the first movie, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. What did it feel like to be on set? Uh, wearing the costume, like even battling Ivan Ooze and all the props and everything. What did it feel like back then? It was good. You got to understand that we shot, we shot, we had a pretty good healthy budget on our Legend of the White Dragon, thank God. And what I did on Legend of the White Dragon, I got actor chairs for all the actors. I got things to make them feel good. If you think like, what do they need a chair for? It's just a respectful thing. We never had that on, on the series. You know, uh, food, proper, you know, food for the actors that work for like 14, 15 hours. You know, I'll jack them up on coffee. I'll put Red Bulls back there. You know, so going to the movie was big budget and they wanted to replace every cast member before we started filming. They always got in my head, always got in our head all the time. They're like, we're gonna recast with bigger actors. And I was like, how does that even work? Like, what do you mean you're gonna recast? Well, we need big actors to play the part. So they were gonna recast. And um, going to the movie was great. We had a pretty big, decent sized budget movie. Such a waste of, of money on, on some, you know, I, I asked one makeup girl if, if she could fix this boot because it was sticking out. She's like, that's not my department. I'm like, oh, can anyone? Well, that's not my department. I'm like, God, you just wasted money on everything. So let me do it myself, you know what I mean? So uh, it, was, it was interesting. I wanted to do all my own stunts. I wanted to do things, but the suits were 50 pounds. And whoever is auctioning that original JDF White Ranger suit, whoever bought it, it, I have original components that aren't on that. I have my boots, I have my gloves that say JDF, that say Hero. There's two different, two different suits. One that says Hero, actually like, yeah, one, one Hero and then a ton of stunt suits. So when I see that, like auction off the original White Ranger, I'm like, liars, because I got half that suit. You know what I mean? But um, but anyway, it felt good. But the suits were 50 pounds. We could barely lift our leg. So it was like, they were made of rubber tires. This is before cosplayers can make really cool stuff out of EV, EV, what is it, EVA? EVA foam. EVA foam? Well, we used tires. I was like, old. They look cool, but uh, I thought it was a good movie. You know, it's funny, the executive producer on Legend of the White Dragon, he didn't like that movie. I'm like, bro, you're like the only one that didn't like it and you put so much money up for The Legend of the White Dragon? It's kind of cool. <laughs> so, but yeah, it felt good. What, uh... Wait, again? <laughs> you got like, we got one, two, and three. All right, one, one more question. You got a whole list. What? what is JJ's real name in the series and in the comics? I wanted to say Jenna because that was my daughter's name. <laughs> but again, I fought for that scene in Power Rangers. They got so mad at me for fighting for that scene. I changed the helmets because they had the, the silver strike. I, I went all out of my way for that For that uh, one scene that I had. Uh, they were like, Tommy doesn't have a son. I'm like, look, I hate to be like this. I'm not being a diva actor, but he needs to have a son. You know what I mean? And um, it's been dry. Like I woke up this morning and I was like, I'm not used to the cold. Yeah. Does, it, does it change on you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. I'm well, yeah. no, I was like, it's it's well, JJ wasn't supposed to be in there, but I put him in there. I made him. I made him shoot that scene, and he said, "Well, it's not going to be in there anyway." But if that makes you feel better, 
It did, because now you got a now you got a comic book. You know what I mean? It's like anyway, I'm always putting in my my two cents and 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 the Mega Force. I made them change the Silver Morpher to a gold, and they said, "Well, how come?" I said, "Because the Green Ranger doesn't have a, a gold morpher." I said, "Who's the owner here? Let me speak to him." Because let me tell you, you're selling gold morphers. Do y'all want to match what you're selling? Or y'all want to like put them in silver? Common sense, guys. Jeez, Lord. Let me be in charge of Hasbro. All right, yes. I, uh, mine's more of a comment. I just want to say thank you for everything. Thank you for my childhood. Uh, I love watching you and your friends, the Tongue Reds. I did your uh, martial arts course online. Because of Sweet. course I come to Texas to be part of your school. Yeah. I like everything about you, highly appreciated. I love your commitment to the fans. It's everything. It's something oh, that you should appreciate. Thank and you so much. Thank you. This is definitely a dream come true to see oh, face thank to face, you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. I have an online training course, right? I don't listen. Uh, people that think I have COVID or something. <laughs> I have an online training course that I started way before COVID, like seven years, you know, a long time ago, seven, eight years ago. And I trained one kid that changed lives. This kid, he loved it. I hate being a Debbie Downer, but this is the problem with, with mental health. He loved it. Five weeks later, he ended up taking his life. His mom called me and said that was the best thing he's ever done was your classes. And I went, and she asked me if she could bury him, this and that. And that's how the train me got started. It's more of a pain than a financial thing. But I thought if it helped that kid so much, maybe it can get people moving and maybe it can it get people at that level. So, uh, you know, it's just it's just amazing to hear to hear things like that, man. And, and thank you for that. So it's, it takes a lot of commitment online, but you also be used to that now. Right. Oh, geez. Oh, yes. And then the. Uh, one, two, and three, remember, okay, yes. Hi. Hi. So, so this is more like kind of like a legacy question. So how does it feel, I'm freaking out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, it's you, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so how does it feel that originally, like, originally you were like the Green Ranger, you were bad and everything, and then you were good, and then you went to the White Ranger, and then of course all of us, I know, when you were younger and then you showed up at Dino as a teacher, how was that transition? Like, how did that feel? Like, how was, first of all, how did it, okay, so there's a three-part question. So. No, that's fine, I got you, I'm following. <laughs> I'm following you. Um, but, um, so, like, two-part question, how did it feel getting all the way up to that point? Number two, how did it feel to walk back in on, like, the set after Like the mentor. Yeah, like the mentor. Yeah. Like, how did that feel? Because that's amazing that you've not only, like, been a legacy for that long, but this is just, you know, I, I don't know about everybody here. It, it, you turned, when we turned, when we saw you, like, everybody on sure just like you, like, oh my gosh, it's Tom Reed. Like, uh, how did you feel? <laughs> well, it, it felt good, and i tell you why it was an accomplishment. I was only hired for, like, 15 episodes. I left, they, they're like, man, this dude's popular, Let me, let's do this Cybertron. They sold Cybertron, that later on became VR Troopers, and then uh, they need they wanted me back for legality. People were calling and saying the kids aren't eating, I and mean, it was a legal thing, it wasn't like, oh, let's bring them back, and they freaked out. All the kids around the world freaked out, like, we want them back. And Savant said, oh man, how are we gonna do it? So they had the uh, White Ranger. So then I came back as the White Ranger. Uh, and then, um, then it disappeared for a while, Disney bought it, and then all of a sudden uh, they asked me to come back to pick up ratings to help save Power Rangers, and I did, even though people at that point never, it, I mean, I got one interview after Dino Thunder. People are like, you're still doing that, and this and that. I helped the brand out to try to pick up the ratings a little bit. Uh, you know, I did that, so I, it, it just, it felt good, come back as a mentor in the movie. Imagine if me and Amy were, the mother and father of Tommy Oliver, the kid in class. Yeah. Come on, man, like, psh, this is no brainer stuff, you know what I mean? But anyway, uh, it felt good because I was only hired for 15 episodes. So it was an accomplishment. It wasn't like a promotion, it was just leaders are leaders. And when you lead, you don't ask to lead, you just become the leader, like in karate. You know, like when doing martial arts, my whole life I've been building up rank. When you're at a certain rank, you're at a certain rank. It's because of hard work and dedication and believing in yourself. 
And uh, so it did feel good though. And come back as Dino Thunder was weird, but what was more weird is Forever Red. Because I don't know what it is, but sometimes leaders all have like like egos sometimes. Yeah. So like I was like, oh, I don't know who I'm going to meet. My, oh, God. I got to lead all the leaders. I don't know how they're going to like that, right? Yeah. So I went in and me and Font really connected and we became really good friends since then. And it was it was cool, but leading the leaders, I don't know how they really liked that, but it was all right. It was, it was good. I had a good time. So that was like one that was like, whoa, different, you know? And two, or the other question. Yes. Uh, what did you do after the turbo? Like, where are you? Oh, I wasn't even looking at you. <laughs> Go ahead, answer the question. I'm going to the guy behind. What? Uh, <laughs> Please. So, firstly, I've been doing martial arts for 20 years and a big part of that was getting in terms of like power rangers. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're welcome. You know what, man? It's just, <clears throat> put it this way. One of my main sparring partners that I'd always throw down with that no one wanted to was Derek the Black Beast. That's who I, who I always throw down with that dude in Houston. That my coach would be like, you're the only one. I said, I'll do it again. I mean, it was one of those things where I, I came from a very small group of successful people. Jacob Silva, UFC. Hurricane Ike, we used to train with all the time. All these people have moved up to that level. And uh, Mike Jackson was in our same camp. So Mike Jackson got the punk fight. And you know what I mean? Like, it's one of those things where if a fight goes long, it goes long. I, w I, w I, would, I, would, I don't like fights going long. I just want to get over with. You know what I mean? And um, if you fight, like, there's a couple things that have been offered since this thriller things. But if I fight, I have to disappear for three months. Because I'm the type of guy that if you lose, you lose and you don't blame. Oh, I didn't have enough training. I didn't do this. Hey, look. You train hard, if you lose, suck it up, own up, you lost. That's it. So I never wanted to take a shortcut and, and fight and end up something, but like that's why a punk, it was an easy thing for me. I don't mean that disrespectful. I didn't really have to train. I could have just went in and just won. Straight out of a con. Straight off a red-eye flight. And I hate being like that, but martial arts has been my whole entire life. You know, wrestling's different than MMA. You know what I mean? So it was one of those things where I just let you to come over here yet? No, okay, fine. We should go say hi. Say hi. Typical girls. <laughs> uh, so it just was one of those things where I just did. You know what I mean? I had I had a good, good, successful amateur record and a record and lots of other fights in my school. Never lost. It's good. I'm good. I don't want to know what it feels like that. You know, and, and, and Derek, I know he lost twice to Houston. I was there to watch him. I'm a big fan of Derek as a person. I went to see him before that fight. I don't care who he is or what you do. I'm a, I'm a big fan of someone that goes to that high level of success that's still humble. And, um, you know, and then so anyway, I just, I, I continue training. Training is my life. It really structures my life. I can't do it without karate. Karate got me Tommy Oliver. I created Tommy Oliver. When I went back to Dino Thunder, what did they ask me to do? Audition? I was at Disney and I said, I left, they said, well, uh, we just wanted you to audition. I said, audition for what? A character I created? You guys make no sense, man. You guys make like no sense at all. It was just silly, but uh, but anyway, I still actively train, I love it. And uh, I'm spandex ready, man. You know what I mean? I, I, try to stay, I try to stay spandex ready. Cause when you put it on, you know, don't lie. Anyway. I know we're up, we got another panel in here or we're good? Yeah. Whose panel's next? Mine. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, listen, I wanted to thank you guys for, uh, <laughs> um, I played the flute in high school. <laughs> uh, let's take a picture. Here we go, you ready? take a quick break real quick and get something to eat real quick. I'll be at the table, okay, guys? And I'd love to see you over there. I'll be here tomorrow. Me and Font have a Q&A tomorrow uh, speaking on the Legend of the White Dragon. 
Sorry I uh, talked too much, guys. I love you all, and uh, thank you guys, okay? Yeah.